Hello and welcome to today's episode of Nimitz Answers. In this series, we're looking at some of the most commonly asked questions on Google on a variety of subjects. And in this episode, we're going to have a look at one of my old hobby horses, which is the NHS. So let's have a look at what questions people are asking about the NHS. The first one is, is the NHS an organization? Well, it is an organization of organizations. You could think of it that way, but it has various sub-organizations, the individual NHS trusts, for example, that are also organizations in their own right. And um, that is in fact part of the problem because one of the, the theoretical advantages of a system of that type is that everything is supposedly integrated, everything is part of a single organization, but of course in practice it often doesn't feel that way and the, the various sub-organizations within the NHS can be quite disjointed. But then again, there's not much that can be realistically done about it because uh, you wouldn't want to run it all from the Department of Health as one single centralized institution. So um, yes, you could think of it as an organization, but more realistically is like a meta-organization of various various smaller semi-independent organizations. Next question. Is the NHS a government agency? Okay, that may not quite be the right word for it, but it is definitely a public sector institution and um, I guess uh, some, some of these questions are probably asked from outside of the United Kingdom. So therefore, uh, these are questions about the NHS's legal status. I think what, what this is about is uh, the question is, uh, is this uh, private, public, somewhere in between? And it is clearly a government, a public organization. Is the NHS underfunded? Well, yes and no. Every healthcare system in the world is, in a sense, underfunded because there is almost no limit to the amount of money that you could sensibly spend on healthcare. Even in the most generously funded healthcare systems in the world, there is always more that you could do. You could always hire more staff, you could always buy more medical equipment, you could always buy um, more advanced, more innovative drugs, you could always upgrade some of the treatments you have with newer and more expensive versions of that. And if there is an upper limit uh, beyond which you really couldn't spend more money in a sensible way, then no system in the world has reached that yet. Relative to what could be done, every healthcare system in the world is underfunded. But I guess what this question is really aiming at is, is the NHS underfunded relative to other systems, relative to comparable systems? Uh, is it less generously funded than the healthcare systems of similar countries? And here the answer is generally no, although it depends of course on who exactly you're comparing it to. Uh, but on the whole, in 2019, just before the pandemic, we spent just over 10% of GDP on healthcare. That is 8%, 8% of GDP is uh, on the NHS and the rest is out of pocket spending on things like prescription charges, dentistry, uh, plus a small private health insurance sector. Uh, but on the whole, uh, just over 10%, that's a perfectly normal figure by OECD standards, by European standards. Uh, that is very much an average figure. It's almost identical to the figure in the Netherlands and it's just very slightly below the figure in Belgium and Austria, for example. Uh, it's more than the spending figure in the Mediterranean countries and in some of the Scandinavian countries, as well as in Australia and New Zealand. So it depends. Uh, some systems spend more. There's uh, the Swedish system, the German system, the Swiss system. They spend between 11 and 12 percent of GDP on healthcare. So those are more generously funded systems. Um, but on the whole, uh, just over 10 percent of GDP was a perfectly normal figure then. And it must have gone up in the meantime. Um, 2020 figures are 
course, unusual, but um, we have already had this increase in national insurance contributions, which was ring-fenced for the NHS. So I'm guessing if uh, once the, uh, the, the most recent figures will come out, it will show us that, if anything, Britain has gone up in that ranking of healthcare spending. And this idea that uh, the NHS is just uniquely badly funded uh, or, or even deliberately underfunded is just not tenable anymore. Let's have a look at the next question. Is the NHS pension good? Um, public sector pensions are generally quite good. Uh, that's part of the problem because these pensions are not pre-funded in any way. There is no fund where that money accumulates. These are just promises that the government makes and they will have to be met by taxes on future generations. So on the whole, um, yes, public sector pensions are pretty good. Uh, it's just that uh, that isn't properly accounted for because nobody is paying an equivalent uh, amount of money into a pension fund. Is the NHS being privatized? Uh, well, yeah, this is um, one of my hobby horses as well, this question. The answer is no, clearly not. Uh, there is always someone making that claim, and usually I'm not talking about some fringe conspiracy theorists, but this is uh, quite, you can often find mainstream figures from the British Medical Association or the Royal College of Nursing or front bench um, opposition politicians making that claim. The main problem with that idea is uh, simply that people have been saying that for over 40 years. Right? This idea that there is a secret plan to privatize the NHS has been around uh, since at least 1980 and probably longer than that. Uh, the only reason why uh, you won't find new stories from before then is, uh, is, is just that the word privatization wasn't widely used in the English language until 1980. But this idea that there's some kind of conspiracy against the NHS, some uh, behind the scenes uh, campaign to, to privatize it, sell it off, replace it with a US type system um, that's been around for ages and somehow the NHS is still there so if there is such a plan then clearly it isn't working that well next question is the NHS app down well um, I don't know is the is the honest answer um, but uh, one of the problems with the NHS is that um, it's pretty difficult to get an appointment and and uh, especially since the pandemic and uh, therefore, I've only tried the NHS app um, two or three times about a year ago, and it just always said uh, there is no appointment available, so then I just gave up trying. And therefore, my answer is, well, does it really make much of a difference? What difference does it make whether it's down or not? Next question is, is the NHS a public body? Um, yeah, again, that, that, that is maybe not quite the right term for it, but the idea is, uh, is, is it, uh, it state-run as opposed to private or somewhere in between, mixed? Uh, the answer then is yes, it, it clearly is. Next question is, is the NHS a company? Um, again, legally not, that would not be, that would not quite be the right term for it. But you could think of it in that sense. You could think of it as a nationalized industry and you could think of it as um, maybe not a single company, but a collection of various companies, a network of companies. And um, in that sense, you, you could think of it as a nationalized industry just like any other. Final question, is the NHS a charity? No, it clearly isn't. Uh, the fact that it's free at a point of view doesn't make it charitable. Um, and uh, the founding father of the NHS, Bevan, was quite insistent on that because he was not a fan of charity. He thought uh, charity depends on the whims of rich people and uh, he uh, thought that state provision is vastly superior to that because it doesn't, because it relies on compulsory taxation. It's, it's not a matter of choice whether you want to pay into it or not. And the NHS is clearly tax funded, whereas charities are uh, funded in a voluntary way and uh, such as the Institute of Economic Affairs and uh, I'll end on that note. Well if you enjoyed that conversation why not watch one of these other videos and while you're here remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell that way you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.